Today, we're going to be talking about the training of NFL running back Christian McCaffrey. He's been in the league for seven years, played for the Carolina Panther, and now the San Francisco 49ers. Today, Christian is getting ready to face off against the Detroit Lions and the NFC Championship, trying to get a trip to the Super Bowl. This is one of the most explosive athletes we've ever seen, guys. He's a multiple-time All-Pro, and he's been the NFL's leading rusher before as well, guys. So what can we learn from his workouts? What can we learn from his mentality? And today we're going to unpack and break down all of those things. If you don't know, my name is Quan. I'm a personal trainer. I've been one for 13 years. And folks, I used to do this series all the time. I took a year off, went through some life stuff, but now I'm back. I feel like I've had more education this year. I feel good. So we're going to have some fun. But if you want to see any of the other videos I've done from people like Jonathan Majors all the way to DK Metcalf and everyone in between, we're going to be dropping more of these going forward, especially with the NFL playoffs heating up and in an NBA All-Star heating up. I'm also going to be breaking down some famous actors and actresses in their in their movies coming up as well. So comment down below if you want to see me talk about somebody. If you have questions about someone's training or diet, I'll break it down for you guys. And if you guys want to see me try some of these routines, put myself through them, let me know as well and we're going to lock in, all right? So before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's lock in and let's have some fun, folks. Let's go. So in this first video that we're reviewing, Christian and his coach are actually training. And if you notice, the coach, he says, if you click the video yourself, the coach says they've been working since he was in high school. It was his high school track coach. They're working with each other now, but Christian also goes on to say in the video that he wouldn't be working with him if he wasn't getting great results. So that kind of goes into the psychology of working with a trainer or working in general. What a lot of people don't understand is it's not about doing something for four weeks or a month or a couple days and trying to get crazy results. He's been working with this same coach for over a decade. And a lot of you in your training and working out can't even stick to a program for more than a week. And I'm not coming at you. I'm just saying, if you want to grow and change, you have to keep working working and training over time, track your results and find out what works for you. And to me as a trainer, the best way to do that is to do the same program for 12 to 16 weeks, track the results, make some changes and go from there. So now we're going to get into the actual workout that he does in this video. He, and this workout is particularly getting him ready for OTAs right before camp. So he's just trying to become a little bit more explosive, do a lot of unilateral work and go from there. So some of the exercises that you see in here are going to be barbell hip thrust. Now, as you see Christian doing the barbell hip thrust, you got those feet planted in the ground through your heels, driving the hips up, really pushing those glutes and locking them out there, folks. It's about that explosiveness, that speed, and the ability to hold that position. As a running back or as an athlete in general, it's really great to have strong glutes. Do not neglect your lower body if you're trying to be the best athlete you can be. I know arms and stuff are great. It's fun to look good, but you have to get down there and develop that booty. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're going to get through there. Next exercise we see, guys, is a front squat, but something's a little different here. We got a front squat with a heel elevation. Now, the reason why this happens is it takes a little bit of the pressure off of the ankles. A lot of times with squatting, people have, they lack the ability to go low and lack the ability to pick up that weight because they don't have mobile enough ankles. Now, as an NFL running back, Christian clearly has mobile ankles, but in this video, you see they get those ankles up. That way he has a lot more control over that weight and can really get through those rep ranges the way that he needs to. As an athlete, what a lot of you need to do going forward is understand what's at play when you're training. Don't just get under a squat bar and squat super fast and just do it just to do it. Don't don't get caught up in trying to squat heavy numbers because you see your favorite influencer doing it online, all right? You should make sure everything you do in the gym is done with intention to get you ready for that next step. Next exercise we got, folks, we've got the banded reverse lunge with reach. Now, this is where it starts to get really fun and sports specific. As you can see, we're not in here just doing leg extensions and leg curls. He's training to make his legs more explosive and more mobile. So as you go into that banded reverse lunge with reach, you're going to see he's got his foot on a bit of a balance beam there, where his foot's on, on something that's cooked getting more activation from his ankle, working on that stability. When you're running back, you're running, you're taking contact, you're falling, you're twisting, you're just trying to stick and move. And because Christian goes through things like that, he has to be able to work on that balance. That's where that unilateral work comes in. And then with the reach, those extended positions, pulling, exploding, getting the body to move together, working on your coordination as well, are going to be instrumental to helping you grow and helping you be remain explosive as an athlete. You got to be able to move both sides of your body at the same time. You got to work on being able to move across your body. These are little things that are going to help you guys get those results you need on the field no matter what sport you're playing. So that's why this workout is so different than what we're used to seeing. So let's hear what Christian has to say about getting better. I try to do my best every morning waking up and being the best person I can be. And that's why I love football because, you know, you, you don't ever have to put a limit on yourself. You can always grow. You can always get better.
And it's a constant battle, a constant back and forth of succeeding and failing and trying to be the best and correcting mistakes and capitalizing on your strengths. And that constant competitive pull for me is, is, uh, is what I love to do. It's, it's what drives me. It's pretty simple, right? It's just about that mindset. It's about being locked in, being thankful for what you have. I mean, Christian didn't ask to be born into a professional athlete family, but what he has done is taken every resource he has and maximize it to his full potential. A lot of us don't have those things, but what we can do is use the internet, use experiences, use the people and the things we have access to to best push ourselves to be better and go forward as athletes like Christian did. But for us, it's the internet, right? Watching videos like this, you know, hearing different coaches talk. I've been a trainer for 13 years, guys, so this is something that for me means a lot. I like to be able to take my expertise and break down his workouts to a way for you guys to understand since a lot of you aren't, you know, in the sports performance world and how you can take this stuff for yourself to become better athletes. So the next exercise he had was a Copenhagen ISO hold. So we're gonna get in a nice side plank position and we're really focusing on the hold and engaging your obliques, folks. A lot of times with our obliques and even like a little bit of our hip flexors as well, like from that hold, that static position, when you're an athlete and you're changing direction real quick, your foot gets stuck in the turf, that twisting, that turning, that getting hit, putting your hips under that load, these are things that athletes like Christian McCaffrey need to be able to do. So that night, that Copenhagen ISO hold is gonna be instrumental to helping him be able to handle load handle extended periods of stress in those compromising positions. Again, the name of this episode is basically training for your specific goals. And as you can see, as an NFL running back, this is what he has to do to maintain his balance and integrity on the field while taking all the punishment that he takes on a daily basis. Next, we've got something really interesting. The most, the best exercise I've even seen on this today. We've got that feet elevated alternating dumbbell incline bench. So as you can see, guys, this isn't about that 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 slow and controlled bodybuilder style of training or even just repping it out. This is basically simulating a version of, I would say like running, that push, that explosiveness, when he has to push through the line or he has to have a man step in front of him. This is simulating some of those positions, some of the movements he's gonna be in. Do I recommend you do this movement? Yeah, especially especially if you're trying to break through a plateau, you're just trying to become a little bit mobile, a little bit more athletic. Again, your ability to move at will is so crucial. And I know move at will sounds weird, but what I mean by move at will is, we get so used to being in these fixed positions, lying down for a bench press, standing up for a shoulder press, that if you need to move in a different plane of motion, like if you have to like, you know, go transverse or you have to do something that's a little bit different, a lot of times you see people get injuries. That's why you see people who are a little bit more bulky, they try something new and they end up hurt, right? These types of movements are gonna help you learn how to move different parts of your body at the same time while generating enough power to get through whatever task that you need. So this is why stuff like this is so important. Now, next, we've got a bent over row with the trap bar on the eccentric, right? So basically, we're you know coming up and bringing that weight down, all right? So if you look at the way that he hinges over, it's very similar to that starting position as a running back, being able to rip back up and bring that bar down. It's again, ripping the ball away, someone coming to grab you, being able to power through, truck through, being able to be in that hinged position for an extended period of time is something that a lot of athletes need to be able to do, all right? What I like particularly about the trap bar row as a trainer, I feel like if you understand how to hinge properly, it's an amazing movement that allows you to control where you feel the load within your row. A lot of times people cheat with a, a dumbbell row because you're swaying and rocking, right? With a trap bar row, you can get in that nice hinge position, load your legs properly, get those feet planted into the ground, and then really focus on getting that contraction in your back. This is probably the most bodybuilder style move you're going to see in this workout today, but it allows Christian to get the job done. So last exercise I want you guys to see is going to be the curtsy squat here, guys. We have a curtsy squat going into a Cossack squat combo. Now, I'm actually a group fitness instructor at a gym called Fit Stop here in Santa Monica, California. I run my private personal training out of Gold's Gym in Venice, the Mecca. But this is the that was the first place I've ever worked where I saw this exercise. And what I love about the curtsy squat in general is the amount of the amount of ankle flexibility you need to do the exercise. And even with the Cossack squat, people think it's just a lateral lunge. It's not. It's all in the way that you load that landing foot. I like to fully load, get that weight into my heel, push and explode back up. And then if you go into a curtsy squat, you know, wrapping that leg around, really getting that flex position in your ankle and 
and feeling the weight shift along your ankle is something that I think is highly, 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 highly underrated. And if you're, again, you're trying to either train to be an athlete, a hybrid athlete, or just someone who wants to switch up their workouts, learning how to move through these movement patterns is going to be essential to you staying healthy over time. And then if you want to be able to move, dominate your flag football league, dominate on the basketball court in your rec league, whatever it is that you do, hell, even golf better, you got to be able to move through these planes of motion and learn how to load your body in different positions to be safe as an athlete. The last thing I'm going to put in here from Christian is him talking about effort and consistency. I'm going to let Christian talk to you guys real quick. And I want you guys just to, to listen to what he has to say here. I've always been very driven and, and effort and consistency were never really an issue for me. And I think it's because you know, I, I always found um, the people who counted me out and I always found something to put another chip on my shoulder. And, you know, in high school, even when I was having a lot of success, you know, I wasn't the top rated guy. I didn't have SEC offers. And so there was always something I was pushing toward. And honestly, you know, at, at the end of all that, I just want you guys to realize that, you know, an NFL running back, yes, they have the ability to afford some of the best trainers and best facilities and things like that. But the, the breathing, the mindset, the training, these things all add up to them being performed on game day. And I mean, you see a ton of guys go to different professional sports with the talent, but they aren't able to use that talent to become the best version of themselves because their mindset might not be off or might be off. They may not spend that extra time in the off season like Christian getting the work in that he needs to become a better athlete. You know what I mean? These are the things we need to work on in order to be great in general. In closing, folks, I just want you to understand that being a great athlete and, and learning how to work out and train better is so much more than just emulating or copying the routines of someone else. Some of the things that I feel like we all need and what we need to work on in the gym, guys, is understanding the mentality, the work that goes into becoming great. So I've, I hope this video was, it was uh, entertaining for you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you realize what you need to do to be better. You can't just show up and work and be half ass for lack of a better word, and expect to be great. Get in the gym, find a plan, stick to it for 12 to 16 weeks, as well as a diet nutrition plan, stick to it for four months, guys, three to four months, learn what worked for your body, l document your progress, and that's going to help you get better. Yes, I create programs, but I'm not here really to push that. If you want to work with me, cool. But if not, go online, type in free workout plan, free diet, try it out for 12 to 16 weeks, You'll see things in there that you like, you'll see things that you don't like, but being able to stick to it and get those results over time is truly what's gonna make you successful. Like I told you guys earlier in the opening of the video, comment down below who you'd like to see me talk about next. I'll find some videos, find some content on them and break it all down for you, all right? I appreciate you and love you guys.